What's up guys, I'm Mike from Terrestrial Imaging. And I'm Brian Grant with TerraView. And together in this video, we're gonna share with you more about TerraView and the Range Pro X8. So Brian, why don't you start with a quick introduction of yourself and TerraView. Okay, well thank you. Uh, so for myself, uh, I've been in this business for several years. Uh, probably going on seven years uh, flying these kind of multi-rotors for various different companies. Uh, I do have a, a background in flying drones overseas for the U.S. military. Uh, I'm a commercial manned aviation pilot and I really enjoy what I'm doing and uh, being a part of this industry. Uh, as far as TerraView is concerned, uh, we've been around for a couple of years. We've been developing this uh, Range Pro kind of in a, let's call it a top secret lab, if you will, just to make sure we got it right, uh, to, a, to a time where we felt it was good to introduce it to the market. And we believe that time is now. Um, you know, we've got uh, made in the US, we've got extended flight times more than anybody else. Uh, we've got some redundant systems built in. Uh, we've got capabilities of many payloads. And uh, it's just a really exciting time to be part of this company. And uh, we're just uh, out here uh, doing this kind of stuff and uh, introducing it to the masses. Awesome, that was a great intro. I look forward to working with you and your team at TerraView. So on the table with us, we have the TerraView Range Pro X8. Uh, as you can see, it looks like a pretty high-end commercial drone. So, Brian, what do you think are the three biggest features it has to offer? Okay. Uh, so the three biggest features I think we offer with this platform are going to be number one, made in the USA, uh, number two, our, our flight time, and number three, the redundancy of the systems. Awesome. Let's talk a little bit more about each one of those three points. So the first point Brian made was US made, and for those of you following the drone industry, that's something that's not commonly heard. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about that? Okay, so yeah, so made in the USA, definitely important. Uh, I think a lot of companies uh, that want to integrate drones into their operation, they really like the idea of having a, a US uh, manufacturer to work with. Uh, we have our R&D, our, our engineering, our, our test facility out in Valencia, California. Uh, we've got our manufacturing facility in Gaithersburg, Maryland, and uh, we're just hitting the streets with it, and uh, we're getting a lot of good reviews. Wow, that's great. All right, Brian, so you mentioned a 70-minute flight time. That's really long. That's longer than anything I could really expect from the other drones out there. Um, what does 70 minutes actually mean? Okay, so 70 minutes, the aircraft can fly over 70 minutes with no payload. We wow. actually have some uh, a, a video on YouTube right now that we have this thing flying for 84 minutes. Wow. Uh, so we can certainly fly longer than 70 minutes. We use 70 minutes just because a, a relatively light camera payload, you can fly for that long. But we do have people out there that are you know, putting LiDAR systems on it, they're putting, you know, heavier cameras on board. That certainly reduced the flight time, but it's still more capable and longer flight and loitering capability than anybody else. Wow, that's awesome. So, with longer flight times, obviously, you're in the air longer, but um, what are some of the benefits you might not see? Okay, so some of the benefits would be, okay, let me go through this, uh, you know, briefly, of course, you know, uh, you have less batteries. So you can fly, you know, other aircraft might need three sets of batteries for the same flight of one of these. And then that ties into the cost, the maintenance, the logging, what have you. Uh, another way of looking at that is, is time on station. If you have to go out for 10 minutes and keep coming back for battery changes, you know, you got that 20 minutes of flight max before you have that in between, you know, bringing it back home. Uh, this is a cost savings uh, type of thing. This is a value add to, to a lot of businesses out there that this is, this is a cost to that. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, not a lot of people think about it, but you know, every time you fly, you take your inspection photos, you bring it back. How much time does it take you to swap batteries, put the new ones back in and get it back to where you were? This keeps it on station longer, and makes it a more efficient use of the aircraft. Yeah, those are some great points. Those are some of the benefits you might not, you know, immediately think of when you say longer flight times. So great points. Mm -hmm. So the third point Brian made was uh, redundancy. So what exactly does that mean? Okay, well redundancy, uh, certainly there's several redundant systems in the aircraft. Uh, a lot have to do with the internal systems itself, but the ones I really wanted to point out today were the propulsion system and the power system. Uh, as far as the propulsion system is concerned, the, the props and the motors, uh, in, a, in a controlled environment, we actually did have the propellers removed 
on at least one of the motors, so essentially not working, and the aircraft was able to fly just fine. I've witnessed that myself. It does work. It's not a big deal. It handles it well. Uh, second would be the actual battery itself. Uh, technically, the, the single battery is broken up into two separate batteries, and what we did was we put a dead battery into one and a live battery into the other, and we're still able to fly the aircraft and land safely. Uh, so if you were to have one of those fail during flight, it would uh, continue to fly the mission and land. That's huge. So as you guys can see, there's eight motors on the copter. What Brian is saying is if any one of them goes out during a flight, the rest will compensate and allow you to land safely. And same with the battery. If one of those um, internal batteries, so again, he said it was split into two. If one of those fails, the other will take over and you can still land safely. That's hugely important. All right, so the Range Pro X8 is clearly a standout drone with some pretty awesome features. And I love the green, by the way. So um, my last question to you, Brian, would be who can benefit most from the Range Pro? Okay, so uh, first and foremost, bring up the fact that this is a enterprise commercial piece of equipment. This isn't a consumer, you know, retail type of, uh, 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 of aircraft system. Uh, secondly, uh, or next, I would say uh, anyone looking for longer flight time for whatever they do. And from what I've gathered over the years that I've been doing this, no one's ever asked me for something that flies less than what they currently have. So this certainly meets that, uh, you know, that capability. Uh, next, hey, there's some uh, places you can fly out there, and there's some places that you can't fly just because of where your aircraft comes from. If it comes from a foreign entity that's not necessarily approved, uh, or there's concern about it, the made in the U.S. Uh, a is uh, is a huge deal, and it enables those guys to fly in those uh, operations. I totally agree. And so, again, thank you, Brian, for that introduction of TerraView and the Range Pro X8. Um, thanks. Hey, thanks for having me. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and thank you again, Brian, for coming down. Hey, thanks for having me in the studio. Our pleasure. So, guys, if you're interested in the Range Pro X8. Check us out on the web at www.terrestrialimaging.com.